Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Marika. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Italian grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence, I ate an apple, in Italian. Io ho mangiato una mela. Like before, let's remove the article to keep it simple, so we are just left with the words. If we break down the Italian sentence, we get the subject io, meaning I, then comes the verb ho mangiato, meaning ate, and finally we have the object mela, meaning apple. The basic word order for Italian then is SVO. It's the same as English. This means that you can convert an English sentence into Italian simply by replacing the English words with Italian words, and you'll still be understood. Italian word order, however, is much more flexible than English. If we swapped the subject and object around, we'd get apple ate I in English, which changes the meaning of the sentence completely. In Italian, however, the core meaning of the sentence does not change. It would still essentially be I ate apple. Me la ho mangiato io. As you can see, the word order of Italian is quite flexible. More often than not, if you wanted to say I ate an apple in Italian, you would not say Io ho mangiato una mela. Instead, you would more likely say ate an apple in Italian. Ho mangiato una mela. This is because Italian is a null subject language where the word for the pronoun is omitted because it's already implied. This is because all of the information can be derived from the way the verb is conjugated in the sentence. For example, the verb aprire means to open. When you conjugate it, it changes according to the subject. Hai aperto la scatola means you open the box. Hanno aperto la scatola means they opened the box. Let's take a look at another example. Tornare means to return. Siamo tornati a casa in treno means we return home by train. Sono tornata a casa in treno means I return home by train. Can you see how the subject changes based on the way the verb is conjugated in the sentence? Okay, let's move on. Negating a sentence in Italian is incredibly simple. All you have to do is to put the word non in front of the verb. Let's go back to the original example, I ate an apple. The verb here is ate or ho mangiato in Italian ho mangiato una mela to make this sentence negative simply add non before the verb ho mangiato non ho mangiato una mela if it were Carla ate an apple it would be Carla ha mangiato una mela adding non before the verb would make it negative Carla non ha mangiato una mela Siamo tornati a casa in treno. Non siamo tornati a casa in treno. You can create any negative sentence in Italian simply by adding non before the verb. Asking a question in Italian is even easier than making it negative. All you have to do is simply raise the pitch at the end of a sentence to turn it into a question. Hai aperto la scatola. Hai aperto la scatola? No rearranging of words is needed. Hai aperto la scatola? Hai aperto la scatola? 
You can create any basic yes-no questions in Italian this way. If you want to be a little more specific, simply add the question word in front of the question. For example, perché means why. Perché hai aperto la scatola? Quando means when. Quando hai aperto la scatola? And come means how. Come hai aperto la scatola? Now you know how to create questions in Italian. Well done! We've covered a lot of things in this lesson, so let's recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Italian sentences can be formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order. Italian tends to omit the subject if that subject is a pronoun. You make a sentence negative by adding non before the verb. To turn a sentence into a question, simply raise your pitch at the end. And if you want to be more specific, just add a question word at the beginning of the question. We've covered only the very basics of Italian grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Italian in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Italian grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. See you in the next lesson! Bye! Bye! Hi everyone! Welcome to the Ultimate Italian Pronunciation Guide. In this series, you'll master Italian pronunciation. Proper pronunciation is essential in Italian, and in this series, you'll learn it in a fast, comprehensive, and easy way. In this first lesson, you'll learn about the building blocks of the Italian pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons. The letters used in Italian are the same as the letters you use in English, with only the exception of a few accents on some of the letters. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Italian, and here they are. There are 24 consonant sounds and 7 vowel sounds. You can form every single word in Italian by using these sounds. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 24 consonant sounds in Italian, you already know 19 of them. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore five of the vowel sounds for the same reason. The only things standing between you and perfect Italian pronunciation are five new consonant and two new vowel sounds. You can handle that! Now let me introduce Desiree, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Ciao! Sono Desiree. Desiree will be giving you native pronunciation examples for you to imitate. But for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Italian. Zaino maglia, gnocco, torta, indirizzo, vero, come. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Italian learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Italian. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Italian sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer? You will be understood. And this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Italian. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. See you in the next Ultimate Italian Pronunciation Guide lesson! Hi everyone! Welcome to the Ultimate Italian Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top 5 Italian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that Italian learners tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, not enunciating the vowels enough. Italian pronunciation is based on syllables where vowel sounds are predominant. Many students of Italian do not enunciate the vowel sounds enough, which makes their pronunciation sound unnatural. To correct this, you should try to open your mouth and let the air pour out, pronouncing each and every syllable clearly. Pay attention to the way Desiree enunciates the vowel sound in each syllable and try to imitate her. Listen to the example. Roma. 
Barone. Buongiorno. Number two, shortening double consonant sounds. This is a common mistake because many students aren't aware that double consonants are actually pronounced for a longer duration in Italian than they are in English. To solve this problem, try to lengthen the sound a little bit longer than you would in English. In the following examples, pay attention to the duration that the double consonant sound is held for and try to imitate it for yourself. Motto Valle Spesso Number three, not pronouncing rolled R's correctly. R. This is arguably the most difficult sound for Italian learners to pronounce correctly. It's quite a complex sound, and in fact, it's one of the last sounds that Italian children learn how to pronounce. The only way to solve this problem is to keep listening to native Italian speakers and practicing it yourself, or practicing with us. Listen to the following examples. Tre. Parco. Radio. Frigorifero. We'll learn more about this sound in lesson seven. Number four mispronouncing the G and L sounds together. This is another sound that's difficult for Italian learners to pronounce. L. Yeah. It's a peculiar sound because it sounds somewhat like an English L, but not exactly. The problem arises when speakers begin substituting the regular L for this sound. Listen to Desiree and pay attention to the way it's pronounced in the following words. Maglia. Meglio. Aglio. Don't worry if you don't get it straight away because we'll break down this sound in lesson six. Number five, mispronouncing the C and I sounds together. C. This sound is identical to the CH in church. The only difference, though, is that it's stressed even more in Italian than it is in English. Listen to the example Cucina. Lucia. Notice how the ch sound is more stressed in Italian than it is in English? Be mindful about pronouncing the ch sound when speaking in Italian. Now you know the top five Italian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't commit these same mistakes. Still feel a bit worried? Over the rest of this series, we'll cover all of these topics in depth. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Italian. Which of these five mistakes is the hardest to avoid? Have you learned any tricks to deal with them? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome these quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Italian Pronunciation Guide lesson. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Ciao! Welcome to Italian Weekly Words. This is Ilaria. And today's theme is, oh, life events. Hmm, let's see. I'm curious. Nascita, birth. When I was born... La nascita del mio terzo nipotino mi ha reso molto felice. The birth of my third nephew made me so happy, which is true. He was born just a few days ago. Mm. Compleanno. Mm. Compleanno. Birthday. Compleanno. Quando è il tuo compleanno? When is your birthday? Il mio compleanno è il 20 gennaio. My birthday is January 20th. Trovare un lavoro. Get a job. Dopo la laurea, uh, i ragazzi in Italia faticano a trovare un lavoro. After graduating a college, young people in Italy struggle to find a job. Mm. Trasferirsi. Move. Mi sono trasferita in Giappone molti anni fa. I moved to Japan many years ago. Yes, that's true. Andare in pensione. Retire. Okay, a mm, little bit early for me, but... Mm, quando andrò in pensione, metterò su una rock band. When I will retire, I will make a rock band. And I will do it one day. We're done. I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave a comment. And see you next time. Ciao, bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the top 10 most common Italian idioms? It might not be necessary to know idioms in order to communicate in Italian, 
but they are very effective and fun. Also, if you can use some idioms, you'll sound more fluent. Are you ready to find out 10 of the most common Italian idioms? Let's start. In bocca al lupo. This literally means into the mouth of the wolf. The origin of this expression isn't clear, but Italians use it very, very often to wish someone good luck. If someone says in bocca al lupo to you, you should reply crepi il lupo. May the wolf croak. Costare un occhio dalla testa. Literally, to cost an eye of the head. This has basically the same meaning as the English idiom, to cost an arm and a leg. It means that something costs so much that you'd have to sell a part of your body to be able to afford it. Essere al verde. The literal translation is to be at the green, but it actually means to be broke. This expression is said to have originated in Florence where the bottom half of auctioneer candles were painted green. When the candle reached the green, the flow of money would come to a stop. Another theory is that the color refers to the inside of a wallet, which you could see once you were out of money. Tra il dire e il fare c'è di mezzo il mare. Idiomatic expressions about the sea are quite common in Italian. This one means between saying and doing, there is a C in the middle. It means easier said than done. Italians often shorten this expression and just say tra il dire e il fare. Una volta ogni morte di papa. Once every time a pope dies. The English equivalent of this expression is once in a blue moon. Both are used about something happening very rarely. Essere al settimo cielo. This idiom has the perfect analog in English, to be in seventh heaven, meaning to be extremely happy. This expression comes from the philosophy on which Dante's comedy is based. According to this philosophy, the earth is in the center of the universe, surrounded by seven concentric heavens. Seventh heaven was the highest degree of elevation for man. Dormire come un sasso, to sleep like a stone. This idiom is basically the same as English. To sleep like a log. It means that someone is sleeping so soundly that they look like an inanimate object. You can also say dormire come un giro. To sleep like a dormouse. Acqua in bocca. The literal translation is water in your mouth. If someone says acqua in bocca to you, they want you to keep it a secret. Because of course, you can't say anything if your mouth is full of water. Il gioco non vale la candela. The game isn't worth the candle. This expression is of medieval origin. Back then, people used candles at night, and candles could be expensive. Card players used to repay the owner of the house that hosted them with either money or a candle. The saying started to spread among players to indicate games where the winnings were so low that they wouldn't even cover the small expense left for the candle. Tagliare la corda, to cut the rope. This expression means to run away from a situation. It originates from the rope that was used to keep boats tied to the shore. To sail, it was necessary to free the boat first but if someone was in great hurry, the rope would be cut. Pretty interesting, right? That's all for this lesson and this series. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in another series. A presto! See you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, how can I use the particle ci? The Italian word ci can have different roles and thus different meanings. It can be a personal pronoun for the first person plural. In this case, it means as. Here are some examples. Paolo ci ha invitato alla festa. Paolo invited us to the party. La nonna ci leggeva dei libri. Grandma used to read us books. You have to use ci with reflexive and reciprocal verbs, 
when referring to the first person plural, we. Let's consider the reflexive verb svegliarsi, to wake up. We wake up at 6. In Italian, that's ci svegliamo alle 6. Here is another example with iscriversi, which means to enroll. We enrolled at the university. An example of ci used with a reciprocal verb is the well-known expression ci vediamo. This stands for see you soon, but literally means we'll see each other. Ci can also be an adverb of place, meaning there. Let's see a couple of examples. Someone asks you, Quando va in biblioteca? When do you go to the library? You could answer, Ci vado tutti i giorni. This means, I go there every day. Another example, Ci sono molte regole in italiano. There are a lot of rules in Italian. Lastly, sometimes ci takes the place of noun phrases introduced by the preposition a, especially with certain verbs. Let's see a few examples. First, let's consider pensare a, which means to think about. You may hear non ci pensare, meaning don't think about it. Here, ci may stay for quel problema, about that problem. Next is credere a, to believe in. You may hear ci credo. This means I believe in that. Here, ci may stand for addio, in God, or alla notizia, meaning in the news. Last, let's see giocare a, to play at. Ci hai mai giocato? Means, have you ever played at it? Here, ci may stand for a questo gioco, at this game. It's not as difficult as you thought, right? If you have any more questions, please leave us a comment. Ci vediamo, see you soon. Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, can I also make profession names feminine? Italian nouns have a gender. This means some are masculine and some are feminine. Generally, you can change a masculine noun into a feminine one by changing the article and the final vowel. For example, il bambino, meaning the child, is masculine. La bambina is feminine. Since gender in Italian language is such an important grammar category, the answer to the question is yes. Most of the time you can change profession names into feminine. Let's see how to do that. Profession ending in aio and iere change the ending to aia and iera. For example, fornaio, fornaia, baker, cameriere, cameriera, waiter, waitress. Professions ending in tore change the ending to trice. Attore, attrice, actor, actress. Profession ending in ista only change the article to specify the gender. Lo stilista, la stilista, the stylist. Il tassista, la tassista, the taxi driver. What about profession traditionally involving men? Society is constantly evolving and the language must keep up with the times. Today, more and more women are becoming lawyers, engineers, doctors, etc. Some of these titles have a regular feminine form in Italian, such as dottoressa, doctor, or direttrice, chief, manager. But what about other titles that were almost never used for women in Italian history, like ministro, minister, or presidente, president? It is la ministro or la ministra, la presidentessa or la presidente. Some professions have the feminine version ending in essa, but this form is often considered ironic or even derogatory. For example, I'd be better to say l'avvocato instead of l'avvocatessa, lawyer, and la vigile instead of la vigilessa, traffic officer. 
In the same way, la presidentessa is perceived as politically incorrect. So, when you're referring to a woman, use the masculine version with a feminine article instead. La presidente. Besides, nouns ending in ente and ante don't change in the feminine form. For example, cantante, singer. So, it's only natural that it should be la presidente. There are instances where the suffix essa doesn't have a negative undertone. So, it's perfectly okay to say poetessa poetess, and studentessa, student. As for ministro, the most common feminine version is il ministro, the minister. However, lately many people have argued that ignoring the gender of the woman who holds the title is politically incorrect as well. So you may also hear to read la ministro. But this form is also incorrect. Masculine nouns change to feminine by changing the final O to A. Nobody would say la maestro instead of la maestra, the teacher. So the best way to call a female minister is actually la ministra. Professions that borrow English words only change the article. Il manager, la manager. Il designer, la designer. Il leader, la leader. One final thing, in colloquial Italian, when referring to a woman by her family name, it's common to add the feminine article la, the. For example, la Rossi. Although this is something very common, it's politically incorrect because it highlights the gender of the person you're referring to only when the person is feminine. It's as if in English, when referring to a woman instead of just using her family name, like Smith, you said, Smith, the woman. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto! See you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, when do I need to add the terminative articles to possessives? In English, you don't use the article de before a possessive adjective or pronoun. However, in Italian, the definite article is part of the possessive. It isn't optional. Also, remember that possessives must agree in number and gender with the nouns of the own thing, not with the noun indicating the owner. So we say, il mio cane my dog. Mio is singular masculine because cane is singular masculine. La tua casa, your house. Tua is singular feminine because casa is singular feminine. I suoi genitori, his, her parents. Suoi is plural masculine because genitori is plural masculine and so on. However, there are times when we drop the determinative articles in front of possessive adjectives. One time is before nouns or close family members. We say mia madre, my mom, tuo padre, your dad, suo fratello, her brother, sua sorella, his sister, nostra nonna, our grandma, vostra cugina, your cousin. Exception to these are with the third person plural, loro, their, la loro zia, their aunt, with plural nouns, i tuoi fratelli, your brothers, with modified nouns or if they are preceded by an adjective. La mia sorellina, my little sister, il mio caro zio, my dear uncle, il suo cugino italiano, his Italian cousin. Another case when Italian possessives don't need the article is when the possessive is after the noun or in idiomatic expressions. Mamma mia, oh my, mio dio. My God. Lastly, you don't need to add the article if the noun is already introduced by an indefinite adjective or a number. Here are two examples. Puoi invitare quel tuo amico alla festa. You can invite that friend of yours to the party. Loro sono due miei amici. They are two friends of mine. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto. See you soon. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com.
Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some examples of Italian loan words we use in everyday English? You may not know it, but you probably use some Italian every day. Did you know that bravo, dilemma and paparazzi are Italian words? English is full of Italian loan words. We use them in almost every aspect of our lives, especially in art, music, cuisine and architecture. The most obvious is probably cuisine. I'm sure you've seen silly people try to imitate Italian by saying spaghetti, cappuccino, espresso, mozzarella, maccheroni. Well, they are actually Italian words. You might have seen al dente or pasta fresca, which means fresh pasta, on English pasta packages. Those are two different ways to prepare pasta. Did you know that the words zucchini and broccoli are also from Italian? Music and art also have plenty of Italian loan words. Take finale, scenario, solo and concerto. Those are all commonly used in English. There are lots more on a technical level too like forte, fortissimo, piano, pianissimo, motto, stanza. In arts and architecture, studio, villa, graffiti, veranda and ghetto, as well as apartment from appartamento, are all Italian loan words. The list doesn't end here. Umbrella comes from the Italian ombrello, lottery comes from lotteria and tombola is also an Italian game. Madonna, Monsignor, and padre are all loan words related to religion. Scherzo in Italian means joke and novel comes from the Italian novella. Sonnet comes from sonetto. Italian is everywhere. Be careful with some loan words though. The Italian word doesn't always mean the same thing in English. For example, manifesto in Italian means poster English loanwords don't always follow Italian grammar either. Zucchini and macaroni are spelled differently in Italian. English words like panini and salami are mistakenly used in the plural form. Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. A presto! See you soon! Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 Minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson we learned how to be grateful saying grazie. Today we learn some of the most common greetings used in Italy. Pronti? Are you ready? Allora cominciamo! Let's start! The most used informal greeting is ciao. Ciao. Ciao means hi, hello, and goodbye. That's why we use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with relatives or friends. And now let's talk about some more formal greetings. The one you're used to hear in Italy and at ItalianPod11.com is buongiorno. Buongiorno. Literally, buongiorno means good day. However, we could also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use buongiorno only during the daytime from morning until evening. During the evening, we say buonasera. Buonasera. So, since sera obviously means evening, buonasera stands for good evening. Buongiorno and buonasera are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. In this formal situation, Italians use arrivederci. Arrivederci. Arrivederci means goodbye. Finally, in Italian, we use the expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. That is, a presto. A presto. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Italian. Ciao! Ciao!
Buongiorno. Buonasera. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. A presto. A presto. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. In formal situations, Italians commonly greet one another by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on the cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Italian friends. It's normal. Ciao! Ciao! In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Parla inglese? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao! A presto! Alla prossima lezione! Hi everybody! Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I will answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is What's the difference between in and a? In and a are two Italian prepositions. While each preposition has its own function, sometimes it's not easy to tell which one to use. In fact, both in and a can indicate place, but when should I use one instead of the other? The first point you should remember is that a is used before the name of a city, town or small island. In, on the other hand, is used in front of continents, states, nations, regions and larger island. So you'd say a Roma, a New York, a Cipro. But you would say in Italia, in Europa, in Sicilia. We use in before the name of a street or square. Abito in Via del Corso. I live in Via del Corso. Incontriamoci in Piazza del Plebiscito. Let's meet in Plebiscito Square. We also use in with the names of shops. L'ho comprato in farmacia. I bought it at the drugstore. Sono in pasticceria. I am at the cake shop. Sto andando in edicola. I'm going to the newsstand. Besides these tips, like many other Italian grammar points, there are no fixed rules, but there is a list of expressions using in or a, so you can start getting used to them. Sono a scuola, a casa, a letto, a teatro, al cinema, al mare. I am at school, at home, in bed, at the theater, at the cinema, at the seaside. Sono in banca, in chiesa, in classe, in montagna, in città, in ufficio, in biblioteca. I am at the bank, at the church, in the class, in the mountains, in the city, in the office, at the library. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto! See you soon! Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between da and di? Da and di are two Italian prepositions. They have multiple functions and meanings and sometimes it's not easy to choose the right one. For example, both da and di can be translated as from, but they're not interchangeable. Let's see the difference. D specifies a feature or origin of something, usually with the verb essere, to be. Da indicates the movement from somewhere. So you can say, di dove sei? Where are you from? Sono di Roma. I'm from Rome. But, da dove vieni? Where do you come from? Vengo da Roma. I come from Rome. This is because the verb venire, to come, is a verb of movement. Da is also used to indicate movement toward a place or a person. For example, sono stato dal dottore. I've been to the doctors. Sto andando da Paolo. I'm going to Paolo's house. Da also has the meaning of at or to, as in these examples. Da Mario non c'è la televisione. At Mario's place, there is no television. Sandra è dal parrucchiere. Sandra is at the hairdressers. 
Many restaurant names also use this pattern. For example, Da Michele, Michele's. Pretty interesting, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. A presto, see you soon! Hi guys, I'm Desiree and today we're gonna check together the 10 questions that you should know. Come stai? How are you? In a basic conversation, this would be maybe the first question that people ask you. For example, ciao, come stai? Ciao, bene, tu? Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks, you? Cosa hai detto? What did you say? This is a useful question. You can also add, can you repeat, please? Puoi ripetere, per favore? If you say this in a bad way, like, che cosa hai detto? What did you say? Che cosa hai detto su di me? What did you say about me? It can also be a starting point for a discussion, for an argument. Just go with the plain tone. Cosa hai detto? Puoi ripetere? That's why I advise you to add Puoi ripetere per favore? Can you repeat, please? Di dove sei? Where are you from? I'm from Italy. Sono italiana. This is a question that usually refers to your country, to your nationality. Dov'è il bagno? Where's the bathroom? You can use this question with everything you need to know the place of. For example, dov'è la cucina? Where is the kitchen? Dov'è l'ufficio? Where's the office? Dov'è la scuola? Where's the school? Just put the place that you need to know about after dove è. You can also say, you can also put a street name. Dove è Via della Francia, for example. Dove abiti? Where do you live? This is more specific than di dove sei. For example, when you already know where the person you're talking to comes from, you can add dove abiti. For example, I live in Turin. Io abito a Torino. By the way, if you don't know it, it's a city in the north of Italy. Like here. Dove abiti can also refer to what kind of house do you have? Like, are you living in an apartment, or a mansion, or a house? Yeah, you can ask this question with dove abiti. Dove lavori? Where do you work? It's another easy question that people would ask you when you're talking about yourself. And you can answer, io lavoro all'aeroporto. I work at the airport, for example. Or I work at the supermarket. Lavoro al supermercato. Che lavoro fai? What kind of work do you do? What is your job? Another question that would come together with dove lavori can be che lavoro fai? What job do you do? What's your job? Qual è il tuo lavoro? Quanti anni hai? How old are you? As I said in another video, in Italian you don't answer I am 20, sono 20 anni, but you say I have 20 years old, io ho 20 anni. Dove hai imparato l'italiano? Where did you learn Italian? Ho imparato l'italiano a scuola. I learned Italian at school. I learned Italian by myself. Ho imparato l'italiano da solo. Another question that would come together with dove hai imparato l'italiano? Or another way of asking this would be come hai imparato l'italiano? How did you learn Italian? And you can answer, for example, I learned Italian listening to songs. Ho imparato l'italiano ascoltando canzoni. If you manage, that's great for you. Bravo! Ti piace la cucina italiana? Do you like Italian food? For example, lasagne, pizza, gelato. I can go on forever, but I will stop here. And tell you that another question that will come for, for sure is Qual è il tuo piatto italiano preferito? What is your favorite Italian dish? That was the last of our 10 questions you should know. Please let me know if you have other questions you would like to know about. And remember to subscribe. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi guys, ciao ragazzi, and welcome to the 10 phrases you always want to hear. Avevi ragione, you were right. Hey, why don't you add some salt? Perché non aggiungi del sale? Mm, I don't know. Oh, you were right, it's really tasteful. Oh, avevi ragione, è veramente buono. Ci sarà un bonus alla fine del mese. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. So you will be able to buy that 
dress that you really wanted or maybe just save some money to travel. If you get a bonus at the end of the month, se hai un bonus alla fine del mese, save up money. E vinci tu, and you win. Maybe you're in a group of friends and you're discussing about what to do. After <laughs> all the suggestions, you are the one who suggested the right one. So when everyone are like, yeah, let's do what you said, can be a vinci tu and you win, or I vinto tu and you won. Hai fatto un ottimo lavoro. You did a great job. Of course, that's something that everyone would like to hear. Maybe just after some exercise, sports exercise, or school, school thing. Oh, you did a great job. Hai fatto un ottimo lavoro. It's something that can always apply, and yeah, you can always use it. Ottimo lavoro, good job. Il budget è illimitato. The budget is unlimited. If you are buying something and you have an unlimited budget, well, that's amazing. You can buy everything. That's probably a dream. The budget is unlimited. Il budget è illimitato. It sounds so nice. Mi manchi. I miss you. Me means to me. So, to me, you are missing, basically. The meaning is the same, of course, but the verb, mancare, literally means something is missing. You can tell that to your partner, your friend, your family. Everyone would be happy to hear that, I think. Prenditi una pausa, farò io le pulizie di oggi. Take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. That's something really nice. Would it ever happen? I hope so. And yeah, let's think it will someday. Maybe it's even nicer to say prendiamoci una pausa. So let's take a break together and let's go somewhere, let's go on vacation, andiamo in vacanza. Sei una cuoca eccellente. You are an excellent cook. If you want to say that to a boy, it would be sei un cuoco eccellente. So eccellente stays the same, but cuoco is for boys, while cuoca is for girls. Everything was delicious, era tutto delizioso, or as kids do when they're not talking yet, this is buono. Good. That was nice. Good to eat. And you turn it. Stai benissimo oggi? You look great today. So if you're like different from the usual and people tell you, oh, you look great today, oh, stai benissimo oggi. That's nice. If you didn't change anything and people still tell you, you look great today, stai benissimo oggi, maybe they have something they would like to ask you or something to be forgiven for. If you want to say, you're really beautiful today, you can also say, sei bellissima oggi, or if it's to a boy, sei bellissimo oggi. Ti ho portato qualcosa di speciale. I brought you something special. And then you start to wonder, what, is it? what can it be? Cake, maybe? <laughs> that would be nice. It's, I brought you something special, it can be maybe your favorite dish, your favorite sweet, your favorite cake, or a present, would be nice too. So, you answer, grazie, davvero, oh, thank you, really. Oh, non c'era bisogno, oh, you didn't have to. That was it for the 10 phrases you always want to hear. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you will hear them a lot. If you like to be told something else, please tell me, comment, and remember to subscribe. Ciao, ciao, bye, bye. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. 
You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So, start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words, and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster, at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi everybody, Marika here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Italian questions. The question for this lesson is, what are modified nouns? In Italian, you can modify nouns. That allows you to convey feelings such as love, hate, or irony in a concise and effective way. Modified nouns called nomi alterati can take different endings that convey different feelings. They are usually divided into categories. Let's see which ones. To describe something positively or negatively, you can use pezzeggiativi and dispregiativi. Pezzeggiativi express endearment. Some common suffixes are uccio and ino. For example, tesoruccio, sweetheart, gattino, kitten. Dispregiativi express dislike. Common suffixes are accio and astro. For example, scarpaccia, ugly shoe, giovinastro, loud. To describe the aspect of something, you can use accrescitivi and diminutivi. Accrescitivi indicate a big size. The most common suffix is one. For example, ragazzone, big boy, nasone, big nose. Diminutivi indicate smallness. Common suffixes are ino, etto, otto, ello. For example, topino, little mouse, bacetto, small kiss, leprotto, small hair, alberello, little tree. Be aware of fake modified nouns or falsi alterati. These are words that look like modified nouns but mean a total different thing. Matto means crazy person, but mattone is not a big crazy man. 
it's a brick. And mulino means mill, not a small mule, that's mulo. Italian children often learn funny nursery rhymes in school about these false modified nouns. Here is one I just invented. Ready? Take note. La gomma per cancellare. Il gommone per andare al mare. Col burro puoi cucinare, ma del burrone non scivolare. Se vedi un lampo, c'è il temporale. Se vedi un lampone, lo puoi mangiare. Which means the eraser to erase, the raft to go out to the sea. With butter you can cook, but don't sleep on the ravine. If you see lightning, that's a storm. If you see a raspberry, you can eat it. Pretty fun, right? Do you know any other false modifying noun? Let us know in the comments. A presto! See you soon!